Hello, and welcome everyone to the Flux Dev meeting for January 11th, 2024. Uh, this is the first full dev meeting of 2024, and we are on a slightly reduced attendance. Uh, we, we hopefully uh, will have more people join us soon, but um, uh, we're just going to get the meeting started. So we're still collecting agenda items uh, if people have things that they want to discuss. Uh, we can add them to the agenda. There are a few standing topics that I'm just going to zero out because I don't think that they are relevant today. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. I apologize for my appearance. I made the mistake of putting on a green shirt this morning, so. Uh, And if anyone would like to volunteer to go first, um, we can uh, I understand this is a little bit awkward because we don't have every maintainer here, uh, but we have close to a quorum, I think. So we should be able to have a regular meeting. Uh, okay, so I see two topics on the agenda, and uh, uh, we have KubeCon EU representation and online meetup Flux Flagger talk topics. I assume, Tomo, this is about uh, future plans, maybe unspecified future plans at this point, but... Um, yeah, I was just going to suggest if people were interested. Cool. Maybe one or two a month. I don't have any updates to share code wise because I've not really made progress on any of the outstanding PRs I have. Uh, I just noticed that we got an email from cncf or something about kubecon europe and like if you want to submit a maintainer talk if you want to have a booth there then i think the deadline is next week something like that so we should like if we want to have a booth we should fill up the form and i don't know who's going to kubecon like by this this time but uh, i think a lot of that is still up in the air depending on scholarship decisions as well uh, but uh, we can assume yeah. we can try uh, as long as there's nothing we have to front cash for. I think we can assume that we'll get some scholarship representation uh, and we should probably decide on whether we want to have a booth again. Yeah, having a booth would be difficult because like last time in, in Chicago, we had like what, five people, four or five people. And, and that was that was like all of us were busy. So if we only have like three people, that would like be really difficult. Maybe we could do like a half a day, something like that. Sorry, are we are we jumping into this topic for full discussion or were you just highlighting? No, I was just the... bringing it up to everyone's attention, like because we, there's a deadline in the form. So that's like, that's the main thing. Just like, yeah. If you want so I was just asking. Coach, 
I mean, should, we, should we discuss this in full or are we still just explaining what the agenda is? Yeah, I think we're just running down the agenda at this point. We can we can open up discussion. I just didn't want to be uh, the one who starts the meeting. I'm not sure who you know wants to lead the first discussion. So, okay. yeah. well, um, why don't we just, if it's okay with everybody, jump into that topic because I have a lot of input for it. I didn't want to jump in. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like so, that. let's do um, that. So first of all, uh, yes, uh, I don't know if I've um, updated some of my emails. So anybody who has that stuff for the forum, um, if you haven't met me, um, basically I help with Flux marketing. And um, yeah, I plan to be there. I plan to support the booth as usual. Um, Sanskar, I, I understand also um, generally there's more participation in the UK. Uh, sorry, not the UK, in, in the European event. So uh, I think that uh, we'll, we'll be able to have more people. So um, so Booth, first of all, yes, please uh, fill me in, you know, have me in or help me um, fill out the form for the plan to have full-time representation. Uh, secondly, it's always easy to um, make sure that you're insured for full-time. And if anything potentially changes, which I don't plan for it to change. Um, it's always easier to dial back to half or zero versus not signing up for a booth and then later, um, you know, scrambling and going, oh my God, we have plenty of people. So please do sign up for um, our full-time plans to have a flux booth at KubeCon EU. Um, and then yes, secondly, uh, as always, um, Many or most of us apply for uh, scholarship funding to travel. Um, we've had a great history with that. So I think especially as many of us here have um, submitted talks, um, talk submissions. So especially if we get our talks accepted, we've had a great history of being funded. So um, I'd say I plan to be there to support the Flux booth. Um, like I said, in Europe, we've tend to have more people there. So yes, we had a slim team in um, uh, KubeCon Chicago, but also thanks to everybody who pitched in, you know, it was really helpful. Um, and I'm sure we'll do just as well, if not better in Europe. Um, and then finally, yeah, I think we all have talks are planned. And then I think the last part you mentioned was submitting for the maintainer talk. So um, I'll leave that to you, but yes, I hope that um, especially since we have many people in Europe and we can probably get travel that you are planning to submit for the uh, maintainer talk. I think you all did really, really well in Chicago. So we should do that as well in Paris. I did submit for the maintainer talk. Oh, you already did? Okay. Yeah. The deadline was December. Oh, so what's Sanskar you're talking about at? Deadline. We just got another email about the deadline. I'm not sure if there's a second deadline or. Uh, I did see something about the video update too, um, and I'm not prepared to produce a video this time. Uh, but uh... yeah, I'm not doing a video update either. Okay, I can help uh, on the video. I think for the most part they do the. Um, I guess they they chose to do the editing part for Chicago, so. Uh... Yeah, that's the reason why the deadline is so early for the uh, video submission, because they they will own all of the editing. So if you just bring them enough uh, 60 seconds of footage um, or something that could be trimmed into 60 seconds, they uh, did a great job, handled everything. And they were really responsive about uh, making sure that we got to review it and that we were happy to. Okay. Anything else about KubeCon EU? I do hope that we get our um, talk submission answers soon. <laughs> it's not a lot of time, not a, a lot of time to book travel. When is the when are they going to announce twenty two? 
Is that what it's like? Yep. I, I forgot. Okay. Seconds, right? Thanks. Are we good with that topic now for KubeCon EU? Anything, any other concerns? I um I expect to be there. And uh, you know, as always, I'm happy to help if you need a little bit more formal help. And um, yeah, just let me know. Cool. I hope we have Boba tea. Yeah, so I should be looking at organizing Sig Bobo with Katie um, pretty soon. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, for anyone on a call who might not know what that is, it's a community event that's unrelated to Flux. Uh, but, you know, we're all friends here. I wouldn't say unrelated, but technically, true. We do technically we do have the flux max dot for a sticker now. So. Okay, so that wraps up the KubeCon topic. I think, unless there's anything else, we can always bolt it on to the end of the agenda here. Um, Tomo, do you want to talk about online meetups? Um. Yeah, it's just uh, putting it out there. If um, uh, one logistically, I guess the Flux YouTube channel uh, is the right place to post anything. Um, I'm open to just herding cats for maybe we can start start easy with maybe one online talk per month, maybe two. Um, if people are interested in sharing anything related to Flux and Flagger. Um, I can also herd people if anybody here wants to be, um, you know, wants to review topics before they're accepted. Like, I'm happy to just sort of be a coordinator if people like the idea of just sort of having online talks or a way to put out talks that are um, Flux and Flagger related. Um, but if anybody, you know, says, hey, I, I want to be a little bit of a gatekeeper and so that not anything goes up, then uh, I'm happy to be a coordinator of that too. So people just review abstracts and speakers. That was just my general thought. Yeah, I think it's fine to use the Flux CNCF channel for Flux and Flagger and, I don't know, continuous delivery of all things. In the end, if it involves one of the two tools, what I'm reluctant to is having, I don't know, uh, product pitches or anything like that. Uh, so as long as we stick to open source, I see, um, you know, if it's a great use of the Flux uh, brand on YouTube that CNCF has offered us. And I think the other kind of filter for that would be like, is the content or abstract going to be generally useful, you know, to all or like a large percentage of Flux users, right? Or Flagger users. Um, yeah. So, for example, now you're triggering um, Lee, you and I back in the day did a short series on, um, I think we just kind of took um items that were in the docs that we felt like people maybe didn't find easily um and you kind of just highlighted them in talks and people really loved those so it's been a while since we did that so maybe kingdon we can touch base with you and if you feel like oh here are like the top five questions i get a lot where i'm kind of pointing them to the same place in the docs and um you know maybe they would find it useful. Maybe we can just start with those, something short, just 30 minutes. 
things that um yeah we could certainly revisit a series like that um i think that flux has grown and uh, been much more refined uh since that last video series and um that could be uh, great for the, the user base. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna poke around with that and then see where it takes us. How are we? No, I'm. I shouldn't change the topic yet. Tamo, you were just talking about the uh, the YouTube channel and like the proper usage of it, right? Um, and then I guess that could a follow up or action thing for us could be to look into some a uh, series of stuff that goes through the docs um, or like corners and pieces of flux that are interesting to people to help them. Um, did somebody update the agenda doc? Am I not seeing that, the January 11th one? Yeah, we're typing. Oh, although I think small wrote 2024, three, so I'll change 2024. I'll try not to do that again. Sorry. Did, uh, hmm. Yeah, because the, the docs I'm looking at, maybe I just need to refresh it or something. Yeah, uh, maybe. Victor is typing a lot, too. I have sort of a general question that's just uh, reaching out to anybody. Uh, I wonder if anyone has worked with this tool. It's a sandbox project in the CNCF. It's called Open Cluster Management. Just show of hands if anyone's heard of this or used it before. Okay. It looks pretty neat. It's It looks like it's adjacent to Cluster API. So I'm going to check it out. When you say adjacent, do you mean that it leverages or is it kind of yeah. alternative? To it? Yeah, like uh, I think it leverages cluster API. So uh, there's a cluster claim CRD that mm -hmm. you can imagine your users might use. And then, you know, you, you would service their cluster claim through cluster API, I think. But I'm not, I haven't stood it up yet. So I'm not sure how it works. Mm -hmm. But it's for multi-cluster management and multi-tenancy. So it seems like it might be a fit for a flex talk. That, that multi-cluster space um, is interesting right now. We've always done multi-cluster really well in the project. Um, I think that people get a lot of indirection already from their Git repositories and things like that to fan out and do interesting selectors. I think um, a lot of people don't really realize the number of ways that they can hold Git to variate and like multiply it. Um, and so uh, there, there's maybe some interesting space here for like the dynamic scheduling portion. I know that there are a few projects and uh, there's there's a movement in that space right now to be like, hey, you know, I have this cluster group, you know, and I have this thing that I want to schedule across this group. Um, you know, how do I kind of do that more dynamically rather than statically? Like something that's more similar to a Kubernetes deployment than to, you know, a like a static declaration of five pods, except at the multi-cluster level. Mm -hmm. right. But this um, 
this open cluster management thing doesn't sound like it would really be in that kind of deployment selector space right now. I don't know. It looks it looks to me like the goal is to enable self-service a little bit more. So like where you have um just because you have GitOps and because you have a definition in Git doesn't mean that you've created a self-service environment. Uh, if people still have to come to you when they want a cluster because they don't understand cluster API and they don't don't feel prepared to administer the cluster themselves, then can you say that you've really enabled self-service? But if they, if you can present them an interface where they can say, I want a cluster, and the interface includes baked in ideas about the cluster is going to have something deployed on it, and you should have some kind of a GitOps basis for that deployment. So put it all in the definition up front. You might enable self-service where you, you weren't able to do it before. Uh, and I think it might be, I'm just looking at it because uh, I, I was pointed at this by someone and it's uh, might become important, but. Yeah. It says it integrates with Argo CD, so. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if they actually mean the CD portion of it or if it's more like a workflows thing. I don't know. I'll read and find out. Are there any other agenda items? Or can we call um, it? I think uh, I... Sorry, I'm just not at a... I'm not using my keyboard right now. But um, what is... It sounds like a good number of us are trying to be at KubeCon EU. Um, which is mid March. Um, and then, you know, we, we've talked about a number of things, uh, like bolstering, you know, some of the content on, uh, CNCF, you know, YouTube, and then also, uh, like maintainer talk, you know, booth, et cetera. Um, what is our kind of, feeling about the projects like bandwidth for maintenance versus like a RFC and the things like that. Like how are we like proceeding with a uh, development on the project and like uh, where, where do we need help and stuff? Yeah, we recently got two RFCs in the project, which are quite uh, good and important for moving Flux forward. Uh, the one around integrating Flux with CD events, which is a Linux Foundation project under uh, CDF. I have volunteer myself to sponsor that RFC and move it forward. Um, and I know we had meetings with the team that proposed it and they will be taking care of the actual implementation. So I can also do the um, reviews for that. Um, beyond that, we are now in uh, a big shift in terms of there is no backing for the Flux project. Uh, if you look at the maintainer's file, everybody is independent. That means um, they don't have uh, a contract. So yeah, we reached out to CNCF to find various ways of um, yeah, getting out of this situation. And we'll probably have um, um i don't know official declaration from the project on the flux blog uh, probably next week or the week after that we are still uh, searching for solutions and yeah that's where we are what i want to say for me personally i want to yeah keep flux maintaining and do all the things necessarily but we'll see how that goes
yeah i realize it's like a it's it's kind of a non-opportune moment to be talking about um any significant like feature additions like in you know in the next like short period of time uh but that's obviously like the priority for uh everyone to figure out how they can you know have a, a new contract that's that uh maybe you can find some overlap to support the project uh, but yeah, I mean, we have a roadmap. We did the last release on December. Uh, mm -hmm. and then my future release should be in three months from now. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is to get all the Flux Helm integration to GA. We mm -hmm. recently shipped. We were quite... Uh, uh, yeah, we weren't ready to ship directly in December uh, Helm GA, so we went with the V2 Beta 2 API, which is basically, you can look at it as a release candidate for the GA. And now we are collecting, uh, you know, uh, experiences from people. Uh, there are some reports that we broke some stuff uh, during the upgrade, so we need to figure out a way to solve them. Uh, we also made some significant changes to the customized controller. Uh, we jumped three versions of customize. Uh, it was blocked upstream by Kubernetes. Anyway, after many, many things, uh, collaborating with other projects, we managed to get everybody on the latest Kubernetes version. But still, there is a project under Kubernetes called CLI Utils, which we were unable to get it merged and released. So I took the decision on myself to fork uh, CLI Utils, uh, which is now under the Flux CD org. Um, I have updated that. So we uh, managed to release Flux in December with the latest and greatest features in Customize which came with many breaking changes. And one of the breaking changes that I wasn't aware, I don't know, maybe I missed it, maybe it wasn't mentioned in the change log is the fact that you can no longer do a build of an empty customized customization.yaml file. <laughs> and people relied on that, you know, just to create empty directories and have the structure ready. And when they were like, okay, now we can add the app, still add it at a later time. And now customized build fails with uh, no files or whatever. So this really needs to be fixed. We have to uh, parse the customization file around on our own, figure out there are no resources and no longer depend on a customized build for an empty output and just simulate the empty output on ourselves, on our own yeah. in customized controller. So that 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 issue should definitely go into a patch uh, as soon as possible probably i'll have time next week to look into it and there is uh, yet another big change that we did we decided to normalize all the kubernetes resources before the server side apply and it's like Nothing can go wrong with it, uh, and it did. Um, of course, there are some bugs in Kubernetes upstream where, for example, RBAC elements in the RBAC definition are uh, marked as optional, but they don't have the omit empty um, annotation for in the JSON. Someone forgot to add it, add that. Uh, and what it means now is that, yeah, uh, Flux will override the aggregating roles because it says, oh, in the object should have rules empty array, but here are a bunch of rules in the cluster and it wipes them. Uh, yeah. So I have to probably make some special case for RBAC in the server side apply libraries and yeah deal with this bug i have no hope to fix it ever in kubernetes is not it's v1 um 
and it's like the most sensitive part of the whole thing. Uh, if a meet empty is not there, uh, maybe people rely on the fact that that counts as an empty array and changing that will mean a breaking change. If it, in my opinion is an omission, is a bug. Uh, you, if you have optional as a comment in Go code for the open API generator, you should definitely have a meet empty there. It's not, and we have to, yeah. Have a workaround for it. I think I know where to place that so it doesn't affect anything else. So yeah, to summarize, there are some things around uh, the Helm upgrade that needs yeah deep dive into the whole rewrite of the controller and see how we can deal with that. Um, and two other issues on the customized controller part, which are blocking for some people <clears throat> so yeah i think these three things that have been reported by now are should be a top priority for whoever has time to work on them um, and do a patch release um, soon but yeah no major we didn't have any major issues even if Helm controller was completely rewritten. The most most people are very happy with it. The feedback was, yeah, it's great, uh, ten times faster. Uh, memory dropped by ninety percent. So yeah, uh, those are really, really, really awesome improvements that we managed to pull off uh, in December. So yeah, I'm really happy about it. Yeah, it's so much more efficient than like a parallel pipeline of GitHub Actions running Helm or something. So much more reliable too. Really stellar work on that. Uh, too bad he does not here to so I can congratulate him. Um, yeah, we, he discovered that basically Helm, because it's a CLI does not reuses the cache of custom resource definition does not reuse the client or anything so it creates everything for every action and it, it basically discovers every, every single api that's registered on the server and from my experience working with kubernetes for a very long time that's the most impactful thing you can do to a cluster is using the discovery api and asking the cluster give me every single api that you know of uh, because it goes through many Places also the Kubernetes API memory goes out of out of place. Um, so what we did, what he did in in Helm Control was reusing the cache that we already have for control runtime, pass the same uh, client. So we we don't do for every single operation a new handshake that would load all the CRDs uh, in memory. And go garbage collector will be okay. I have gigabytes of things. I don't have time mm -hmm. to take care of those now because you can you do so many other operations uh, in parallel, mm -hmm. right? You can reconcile 100 ham releases in the same uh, process. So um, having the figuring out how to safely share the things that should be shared has made a drastic impact to to resource usage, CPU, also garbage collection does not have much work to do, which is great, uh, which makes the whole controller way, way faster. Yeah, and that's just one of the many things, many improvements that Helm Controller got. It's also drift detection and other things that we managed to ship this time that were like uh, requested for years in, uh, in Flux. That's a such a huge refactor of, in my opinion, like the Helm project as a whole. Honestly, um, on the subject of controllers sharing what makes sense and having access to the things that they need to in the context that they need, um, all of you know that that's been an obsession of mine. Wanted to put it on your um, kind of. Like just in your headspace. And I'm working with the uh, SIG off and the uh, gateway API and um, also uh, SIG storage. And uh, we are trying to. I, I didn't want another API. 
uh, in core for this, but uh, it was kind of a dissenting opinion. But now that I now that I've looked at some of the problems that we're trying to solve, I, it's looking like we might need something a little bit more dynamic than what RBAC currently can do. Um, the uh, we're we're looking at some mechanisms around uh, this API called Reference Grant. Uh, some of you might have seen it uh, since it's used in Gateway API. Uh, we're we're looking at what it could look like for the API server um, to be a central enforcing uh, portion of these reference grants. Um, Flux has had this. Uh, use case for a very long time, and we've done uh, some uh, mixtures of, of things to avoid confused deputies and uh, allow multi-tenancy in a soft way, uh, as well as the controller flags to allow cross namespace referencing. Um, this, yeah, yeah. So yeah. one that I so I had one or two RFCs on this topic where I proposed uh, an API that looks more like uh, network policies than RBAC. Um, mm -hmm. But that was before Gateway API was a thing. I yeah. started those RFCs. Then mm -hmm. of course, looking at Gateway API and, and seeing that there is a chance for the reference grant to actually be something not specific to open API, but something specific to Kubernetes itself. I decided mm -hmm. to close those RFCs. So those RFCs are dead. Mm -hmm. And I added a note there that once the uh, reference grant will move out of alpha or there will be something that can be used, Flux will adopt it. And we are not going to build our own cross reference. Yeah this network policy like API, yeah. if there is something that works and it can make it upstream, it's way, way better for the Flux project. We always want to adopt things from upstream and not roll our own security, our own RBAC. We've been trying to avoid that since the beginning. So yeah, yeah I think from the original Flux design, like uh, the the use case like didn't actually need any new APIs if you just held our back the right way. And uh, I know that that was like kind of awkward and, and abstract and a little bit underspecified. Um, but uh, I showed some of that material to Rob Scott, uh, as well as uh, Jordan Liggett and stuff. And uh, they're like, oh, this has got some potential for us to uh, maybe build some small mechanisms. Uh, and some libraries for controllers to be able to do a a better effort on um, like having the right context to drop mm -hmm. privileges for specifically what they're doing, uh, while also getting some help and enforcement from the API server. Um, Rob authored a, a small controller over Christmas uh, that is a proof of concept. Um, I've just done the first code review on it. Uh, and we're trying to just build a little little implementation that kind of demos how the API can be shaped and how it can work and maybe some of the uh, mechanisms that we can sort of bend before we look at including maybe something more formal inside of the API server itself. Um, so I do just the, the, the I, cap so updates. I haven't been able to work on it because of the whole situation that's been going on no no worries oh. yeah uh and honestly oh. you know how slow this stuff will move right so, yeah but yeah and hoping to do like tech see if it kind of makes sense according to the technical document that rob scott shared uh but yeah. because i know there were performance like there were like two schools of we thought. have we have concerns yeah um mm -hmm. the the reason that I'm I've kind of backed off of my dissenting opinion that we shouldn't make this API at all is A gateway API is already using the shape, B Sig Storage wants it, um, which would take more convincing to be like, hey, let's only use our back, which people already don't use properly. Uh and then C is that there are some more dynamic use cases uh that are impossible to 
kind of build without some new technology. Uh, and this new API could be a place to build those mechanisms. Um, one of the desires is to like, uh, with minimal changes to an ingress controller, like allow uh, an ingress controller to only have access to like, say the TLS secrets that it references um, rather than like all TLS secrets. Uh, and just do that automatically for cluster owners. And that, that requires like watches and like JSON path or cell expressions on like every ingress object. And like, but we'll see if it's a thing. Uh, we, we're playing right now to see if it's possible. So I think all the CVs in uh, ingress and GenX should motivate people to really find the solution because hard coding yeah. secrets naming are bug when you have set manager or something that provisions things automatically, rotate secrets is is not working. I mean, no matter yeah. how you make you like hard coding the exact name and namespace. Yeah. There's not enough expression like... inside of the RBAC. It needs to be generated. So that's what our con our controller does right now. It actually it already kind of 70% works. So um but we, there's a bunch of other sub problems that we need to solve like admission and uh, performance and then like confused deputy which at least we have inspiration from flux on how flux solves the confused deputy problem um with impersonation uh we're just like kind of, kind of holding it a certain way um you know other sig auth people kind of don't like the current state of impersonation i i've always felt like a uh, impersonation is like it's kind of the bare minimum, but like we really could use some really some nicer tools in there. So if we can build a superior mechanism or extend it in some way, then uh, we should be able to uh, give controllers some libraries that are easy to use, but allow them to drop context kind of more generally. Um, yeah, my, so. my major issue with impersonation right now is that it works great for the API server, and the resources that the API server serves. But the idea is that when you impersonate a service account, you can, you should have that identity also outside the cluster. That's what workload ID did great, but it did it by mounting files in pods, even if you attach mm -hmm. the identity to a service account. So from a Flux perspective, it's great that I can impersonate a service account when I'm making changes, but Flux is not only interacting with API server sources, but also with mm -hmm. other APIs from outside the cluster. And it's impossible yeah. to do that because you need to spin up a damn pod, <laughs> wait for Kubelet to mount files in there, and only then yeah. read, let's say, I don't know, the AWS ID and an FML key to connect and download something from ECR or, you know, everything yeah. that you touch in a workload identity is like, yes, it's a service account, but we don't do anything with a service account. It's about the pod and files on the pod. And that that is like, also Flux users are, are, are quite contradicted about it. It's like, Oh, I, I put here service account name. Why it didn't go to my ECR? It's like, why do I have to bound it to source controller uh, service account? So, because it's a pod in there. I'm unhappy with how that uh, developed because, yeah, it makes it really hard to extend. Um, but but we are working to fix that in Flux. Yeah. We are working. Like, like there is a open PR, which I am working on, but like it's it's uh, right now I'm writing Terraform tests we are, where you can have, no, we are not define the service account name of the object instead of the controller. So you can define the, the service account exactly for the particular OCI repository or the particular image repository object. Yeah, so we then are, you can use identities. We are solving it only for two or three providers and we are taking yeah. all the work on yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. The general YDC workload. Yeah. General yeah, yeah, yeah. workload identities that I don't have to program with the AWS SDK, with Google SDK, with all of that. It's already there. It's already tested. So I should take advantage of it. What we are doing in Flux is because we have no way of reaching out to the 
workload identity implementation. Now we have to build all these things on our own and take maintainership of that. And mm. going forward, it will be like, I would definitely put a stop on all of that effort uh, before we figure out if what bits of Flux can be maintained or not. But taking that onto the Flux project now is not, I'm not considering it. It's yeah. so much. Work. And that, and that's kind of a general tone for everything. But I'm I'm glad that we uh, got to sync up on the your opinion of the reference grant effort, and uh, that I could give a little a real time update on kind of where that's sitting right now. Um, I'm actively involved in in that. Uh, you know, there's other things that we can build in Flux later as well. That uh, you know, when we met. All in Chicago, it, it seems like, oh, this seems like maybe it's going to be a, a fun time to to uh, send some RFCs. But right now, uh, I think we can just relax on that. Um, yeah, but let's uh, just figure out how to um, make sure everything can keep moving forward. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for letting me speak so much. I know it's been a little bit since I've um interacted so much on these meetings. So, yeah. that's, that's my, probably all that we need to talk about for my impromptu agenda extension. So, yeah. Hey, it was great seeing you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else on the agenda or we can call it a day? That's it for me. All right. I think that's it. Okay. Well, see you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.